Hello, I'm Charles Gross. Welcome to the Critics Circle for our On the Isle Review. Our guest this evening is Eva Heinemann. Eva is a longtime theater critic and the host of one of my favorite theater shows, High Drama. And you can see that on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, where you can also see two On the Isle Critics Circle and on YouTube. Welcome, Eva. It's a pleasure to be here. As you can see, uh, this evening I have my grandmother's sewing machine out in front of me. And this sewing machine is operated with a lever instead of a pedal. And you push the lever aside generally with your knee to make the machine work. And when I was a little boy, I used to go to my grandmother's house and I would hold the lever while my grandmother was doing her sewing. Now you may ask, why have I put grandma's sewing machine on today? because today we are going to review a show that has a lot, in fact, almost everything to do with showing, and it is at New York Theatre Workshop. It is Christina Wong, Sweatshop Overlord. And this is how Christina, with her Hello Kitty machine, brought a mass revolution during the pandemic. And my contribution is this. <laughs> It's a sewing machine that Mandy Patinkin threw out the window at the movie of Ragtime because it was filmed on my block when I first got here. My entire apartment was furnished, clothes, everything from Ragtime. Thank you very much. But now to talk about Christina Wong, who chronicles how she went from unessential actor to Christina Wong, sweatshop overlord. The pandemic hit, and she was left without a stage or lecture hall to perform in. What to do? Inspiration struck when looking at her Hello Kitty sewing machine and realized she could sew masks. A friend told her some firemen in her city needed masks. Sure, no problem. Just cut up an old bed sheet, get elastic from whatever presents itself, like a bra. And from this one request, others heard about it and wanted masks and more masks. This was too much for one person and her mother. And so she created the anti-sewing squad with the unfortunate or maybe not acronym of ASS. Yes. And she recruited people to this group from all over the country. I think at one point she had as many as 600 people who she kept called her aunties, although there were a few uncles in the group. And together they sewed, they sewed masks for hospitals, for fire departments, for government agencies, for Native Americans, for poor communities, for basically anyone who needed them. And it's a fabulous story. To her, this is a war. So she strips down into her Rambo outfit. She's got, you know, with sewing threads, you know, in instead of bullets. And she tells this amazing story of what she did and what she created during the pandemic. And it's occasional audience participation. She says, oh my goodness, we're, we're out of elastic. Please, anything you have, throw in. People are throwing underwear and bras and what, what have you uh, at you. And we see her at her Hello Kitty sewing machine, which, it, it, you know, at least the, the wheel turns, whether it actually sews anything or not, I don't know, not that it really matters. And it is just this wonderful 90 minute evening about how this woman really made a difference during the pandemic. Yeah, like she said, she was a shadow FEMA because the government wasn't doing anything. So her and her aunties, and we get to hear about some of the aunties and their backstories. And it's really touching that no matter what went on in their personal lives with health or whatever, they, mm -hmm. they were still looking out for other people. And it was so nice to see, you know, the country being so divided during this pandemic time to see people coming together and, sewing the rift up. Yeah, and then she starts naming some of uh, her early recruits. She'll name this one person, and this is the type of sewing machine she had. And then another, and she had this type of sewing machine. And I, I actually wish she had done that more often, not that I had any expertise in sewing machine models, but it was just fun knowing their you know, weapon of choice. I don't think anyone had one that was quite as old as my grandmother's, but it really was an engaging piece. And at one point she has, she gives out, you know, she's talking about why aren't people getting vaccine? And, you know, she has these excuses written out. She has members of the audience 
read it. So there's occasional participation, but all in all, it's just a very fun and very engaging evening. The only time she kind of lost my attention was when she was referring to things that were, you know, part of the pandemic story, but not necessarily part of her story. You know, she talks about the, the elections or the January 6th attempted takeover of the Capitol, which again, certainly part of the story, but not necessarily part of her story, which was far more interesting. You know, he, see, hearing her perspective. But see, I think it was necessary because, you know, she's telling our story as well as her story. And this was part of our collective, like, you know, mental breakdown was all these horrible things going on besides the COVID. But she was like this beacon, her and her ass squad were the beacon in all of this. And it just made, it just made it more rounded and fuller and gave you more hope. This was a humanitarian story. She she had people get off their asses. And at the end of the show, she tells how when her squad was disbanded, how they actually had a face-to-face meeting, because most of this was done over Zoom, because, you know, people couldn't go out during the pandemic. And without her knowledge, they sewed her this beautiful quilt and presented it to her. And that quilt is now on display at New York Theatre Workshop in the back of the theater. The director was Che Yu and the scenic designer, and I'm sorry if I mangle the name, is Yung Hyun Georgia Lee. And that set was incredible. I mean, there was this giant pin cushion you could stand on and everything was sewn. Like the tablet was like the sewn thing and the, and the packages she she mailed all over the place. It was just remarkable. And, and, she, and, so and the Hello Kitty sew, sewing machine was adorable. And she's adorable. And, and she, she knows how to tell a story. This was pure good storytelling. And it, it just made you feel good. 90, 90 uninterrupted, very engaging, very enjoyable minutes. And Christina, in your honor, I'm just going to reach for the lever of this sewing machine here and just run it in recognition of all the good work that you did and how you became essential after being unessential and just for presenting us such a wonderful show. And, and it was also a good mother-daughter studio because in the end, she goes, it's amazing. Me and my mom, we shared friends uh, well, as, well, as, as well as mask making. The ironic thing was, you know, her, Christina's family, you know, and, when, and many Asians, when they came to the United States, sewing was all, you know, one of the few things they could do or were allowed to do. Laundry, yeah, exactly. Right? And so who knew that this, you know, that they'd be able to take out this skill and really made a difference. Our one to five playbill countdown, five being the best. I am going to give this a solid four. And me, I'm going to give it a five because there was nothing I didn't like about it at all. A wonderfully engaging play, fabulous performance, and sewing machines. (laughs) What more could you want? Yes, this play was not so-so. It was so wonderful. (laughs) It was. Eva Heinemann, thank you so much. Thank you, Charles. Thank you.